travel in buffalo circles uh, different people that understand the history of buffalo and and so i i uh, i hear some of the stories of how many buffalo there used to be on this land and there are estimates from anywhere from 10 million 30 million 60 million up to 100 million and and so i tend to side with the 100 million buffalo the buffalo were almost annihilated uh, in North America about 150 to 200 years ago and that ha that's not that long there are people that live are living on on this planet that are 110 years old so 150 years isn't that long ago and um, and part of my my love of buffalo and, and researching what happened to the buffalo uh, you know there's some pictures that that float around the internet of piles of buffalo bones and uh, Regina has a nickname they're known as pile of bones they're actually pile of buffalo bones and so some of the rhetoric around it is that they were over hunted they weren't over hunted uh, the, the buffalo lived with indigenous people for thousands and thousands and thousands of years it was a sustainable practice that we knew that we needed to only hunt so much because we knew we needed them the following year. It's always difficult to, to be politically correct about this part, but you know the, the research that I've done is, is that the buffalo were killed um, at an alarming rate uh, for the sole purpose to, to oppress the indigenous people, to, to get the indigenous people uh, under the thumb of the government and to take away our land <clears throat> and so they thought you know if they get rid of the buffalo by any means possible then that meant that our food source would disappear and be forced to sign a treaty and under the treaty the government the the government uh, the queen mother at the time is because it was under British government promised that we would be looked after because we came became wards of the government and in, in replace of in, uh, instead of buffalo, we would get pork, salt, flour, sugar, and um, and that's not a healthy diet. And and so no wonder you know why we have an epidemic of diabetes in our communities. It's been 150 years in the making. So if there's a chance that we could return back to the buffalo, even in our diet, uh, you know, there's a better chance that we'll be able to to eradicate diabetes in our community because buffalo is some of the, the, the most leanest meat and uh, out there that you can eat and, um, and and now the irony of it is buffalo meat is some of the most expensive meat out there and so we need to to bring back the buffalo to our home communities our first nations our first nations need to begin raising buffalo for their people and in reintroducing buffalo into our diet, it's important. It's important for, for us to, to um, reclaim our identity as buffalo people. A big part of why uh, I'm doing this project response to racism is to, to identify colonization and what that means to me as an indigenous woman. And a big part of it, I, I believe, is, is um, literally being brainwashed to, to believe that as an indigenous person we we haven't contributed as equally as others as settlers or new immigrants to this country but understanding who i come where who i am and where i came from as a buffalo person not only did were the buffalo sacrificed for us to to continue on in this land as it is but we signed treaties to share the land we, we signed treaties so that the natural resources could be shared with newcomers. We signed treaties so that settlers and immigrants can, can find their dream here on this land. Um, the sad part of it is, is as Indigenous people, uh, we've been brainwashed to think that we're the inferior race and that uh, we come from a primitive background but when you understand how much engineering architecture chemistry biology stamina determination and pure willingness to hunt buffalo to be able to survive from 
living with the buffalo for thousands and thousands of years it's that's amazing that's amazing there's there's nothing in this world right now that would could compare to to chasing and living amongst the buffalo i i'm proud to be a part of that buffalo nation and i do this work to show others that they could be proud too to we remember where they come from. We're resilient. We will we'll survive colonization. So I'm really grateful for Commonweal and NCCIE uh, to, to host us through these video interviews and these video clips, uh, providing us the, the technology and the opportunity to share what we love to do working with Buffalo. And uh, so there'll be more videos coming out on NCCIE's website in the coming months and please watch for our social media on Commonweal for more information about these videos and links and I just want to end off by saying Hinamai that means thank you in Nakoda and Matakyuasen we're all related and that doesn't necessarily mean by blood but it means that what I do affects you and what you do affects me so we need to be mindful of how we our footprint on this earth and I do my best to live with kindness and, and I'm really grateful to be able to share these teachings with all of you.